the, the other thing around uh, genome sequencing that I think a lot of people um, you know, have heard of, but they probably don't understand, uh, is when you get into all of the gene editing, right? So whether it's at the individual cell level or kind of this DNA editing, maybe talk a little bit about, um, it's kind of hard for me to see that world happening if we don't actually understand first, right? Like we kind of have to understand the, the genes and the DNA and, and kind of what's going on before you could even think about editing. Uh, but, but there's obviously technologies out there that people um, kind of have heard at a, at a high level. And how do you think about that as maybe kind of a long-term uh, path that the, the medical community is likely to pursue, whether it's just for, you know, curing diseases and kind of uh, direct, you know, uh, health applications versus like, hey, I want to change the color of my baby's eyes type stuff. Yeah. Well, I think the, the extreme depths of potential knowledge and the lack thereof in biology sounds like a daunting problem, right? So, oh, we don't understand anything. How can we even edit? But I think this immense amount of depth and complexity and the lack of knowledge opens the door also to genius, right? You can be very genius by saying, like, maybe we don't have to know all these things. Maybe we can hack it. Like, for example, if you know a mutation does some bad stuff, but you have no idea what, you just know in the outcome is bad, but we cannot figure out what it actually does. Maybe you don't need to figure that out. Maybe you just remove that mutation through gene editing. And, you know, maybe you cut it out and replace it with a healthy piece of DNA. So the whole CRISPR revolution, I think it's, you know, often things get overhyped, but CRISPR is a little bit like the internet. You know, everyone said the internet, oh God, it's going to change our lives forever. Everything is going to change. And everyone's like, oh my God, so obnoxious. These people, they're overhyping this. But it was just true. I mean, it is changing everything. And CRISPR is very similar because CRISPR allows you to, it's kind of crazy when you think about it. It allows you to, in a very targeted way, take any specific segment of the DNA and replace it with any desired fragment you want to put in there to the nucleotide. You have 3.3 billion nucleotides on your DNA. They can, to the single nucleotide, say, okay, at that specific location, cut it out and in, inject that sequence. And if you, and they can do it in, living organisms they can basically inject it into you and it would kind of you know disperse across your whole body in theory and replace it in all your cells which is extremely freaky because it actually works right so you could actually change your eye color in theory while you're like living and or even change all kinds of things so that is extremely freaky of course there's an un you know, enormous amount of things that can go wrong. You're probably going to die uh, if you want to change your eye color because some stuff is going to happen that no one, you know, was considering. So I wouldn't test it out at home. Um, but in theory, it's definitely possible. And so we know a lot of things, but compared to what we should know, it's basically zero. But that doesn't mean you can't do absolutely amazing or shocking things. And uh, of course, I'm very, you know, we are very focused on disease and keeping people healthy and, you know, not, not let them age too fast. Um, there are many things you could do, but of course, you need very, very deep clinical trials for that to prove safety, especially if you start editing genomes and living humans. That's, it's more a regulatory issue. I mean, scientifically, it's definitely extremely possible and not even that, I mean, you can do it today. And, and where do people get, so like, let's say I want to take one of those nucleotides and uh, I want to replace it, right? So I've identified that that one is a bad one, whatever, whatever, for whatever reason. Where do I get the replacement? Is that something that I take from somewhere else in the body? Is that something that's like, quote unquote, lab grown? Where, where does that replacement one come from in that scenario? So here, you know, and these are great questions, because if you go into biotech and you will learn about these things, it's absolutely stunning you know, how hard certain things are where you think that can't be that hard and how easy certain things are where you think this must be completely impossible. And then someone's like, no, it costs five bucks, go on the website, you get it. And, and it's like stunning. And this is one of these things. You can literally say, here's my sequence, T-T-A-A-C-G-A-C-G-A -A 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 or something, right? That you, I don't know where you get this from, but whatever, you do your research and say, I want this little part of the protein change, these amino acids. And so I have, you know, these 24 nucleotide sequence that I want to inject here. You can literally go on the website. Um, I'm not going to promote any specific companies, but you can Google that quickly. 
copy paste your TTACG things in there, take out your credit card, and they send it to you uh, two weeks later. No way. In a little tube. No way. And then you have them. And they are clean. They are, you have a few billion of these little sequences in there, and they're all lead sequence. And, and what are people doing with those today? Are they like injecting them? No, there's a huge amount of stuff that where this is used. We do this every day. We order them every day. So, um, you know, you, use, you need them in sequencing, for example, for PCR reactions. So they are called, you know, these nucleotide sequences are hugely you know, used all across the board. They are, for example, used as primers. So we can use them to basically have a little sequence that reflects another sequence on the DNA. And if you put that into a mix and do some stuff with it, heat it back up and down and put polymerase in it, this enzyme, then these primers will anneal, like they will align to the complementary, the complement on the DNA, and then start reading that out, like whatever comes after. So you can basically say, I want to read out whatever is on the DNA after that sequence. That's actually sequencing. So you say, okay, if you want to read out that specific part of the DNA, what you have to do is a primer that you synthesize that sits here and it aligns here and then the polymerase enzyme comes here and starts complementing the rest of the DNA. And then that gets put on a sequencing machine and you read it out and you see, oh yeah, this is my primer. I recognize it. That's what I designed. And then what comes after is the sequence that I was looking at. So I can see if you actually have a T there or a T 